Hello and a very warm welcome to the Ladies Club. My name is Valen Kirtley. Thank you for joining us as we bring you all the game changers and trailblazers when it comes to women's sports in Mzanzi. Today our topic zooms in on women who are reaching greater heights in boxing. More and more we see ladies that are getting involved in the sport and they're gradually changing the boxing landscape in South Africa. These ladies are shaping social perceptions, proving that women can rise and conquer any male-dominated field in the sport. You're welcome to join in the conversation. It's so easy. You can find us on social media platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, as well as on Facebook. Our Twitter handle is at sports at SABC. You can also use the Twitter handle at Levenwoodsweddy, at Valen Kirtley, and uh, just use our hashtag. Hashtag, uh, hashtag the ladies club. Let me introduce you to our game changers because you already saw them. You saw them nodding when I said that uh, women boxers are changing what the landscape of boxing actually looks like in the country. We've got uh, two award winning individuals from the sport. Manager Colleen McGorsland and Smash Smangele Hadebe. Welcome to the both of you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Thank you for having, having us. You guys both nodded quite vigorously when I said that women are getting involved in the sport and they're changing perceptions. So obviously the first thing that many people ask you is, boxing? Isn't that a man's sport? Yeah, it is quite a man-dominated sport. So for women to be part of it, it's, it's kind of, it, it, it leaves a bit of a doubt for male, according yeah. to, yeah. So would you say, give us the platform as women and we'll show you what we can do. Just how difficult is it, though, to break through those kinds of perceptions, Colleen? It is quite difficult. Um, I don't know. You know, we have got some men that support us, yeah. but we find more resistance than support in the, in the sport at the moment. I think it's just uh, uh, men have to get used to that women can actually box, and they're just as talented as a lot of the males, if not more. You know, yeah. Just mm. given the platform that we will prove it. Yeah, mm. and women have to work uh, so much harder. Yeah. So much harder. harder than men. We're going to continue this conversation, mm. uh, but we like to set the tone for our show with an inspiring quote. And this week's quote is by figure Olympia champion Nicole Wilkins. She says, If you really want to achieve something, you must be willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen. No excuses. Wilkins burst into the sport of bodybuilding in a record-breaking fashion, earning the overall titles in both of the fitness and figure divisions at the 2007 NPC Team Universe Championships. She holds the most figure Olympia titles for women in history, with four titles in the bag. Her victory back in 2009 at the age of 25 made her the youngest ever to win the sport's most prestigious crown. Uh, Doing whatever it takes, no matter the cost, no. yes. you know what it means to put I everything do. on the line. I do know. I do. It's like your whole life. You're putting your whole life in it. You just have to focus. Keep your focus, be disciplined, and just break through anything that comes your way. Is it worth it? Oh, it is worth it. It is worth it. I, that... That idea that uh, when you look at what men get paid in order to, to do the sport, mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel uh, and how do you inspire your boxers, your female boxers, uh, to continue to stay motivated when they look at what they get paid and when they look at what the prize purses are in the men's sport? Yeah, absolutely. You know, my job is to make sure that the boxer gets the best money possible. So I will fight for my girls as much as I can. Um, they train just as hard as the men, so they should be paid just as well as the men do. Um, you know, the, I think things are going to change with boxing in South Africa uh, when it comes to women, because BSA have paid attention to this, and they are talking about that, you know, that has to be equal. Um, I think that's, that's the right thing to do. They train as hard, they're just as committed, as dedicated. So I think it's, it's about time that they do get, get paid what all the men get paid. So both Colleen and Smangele have got loads of passion for the sport of boxing and we're going to be finding out where that seed was sown first. But it's time now for us to take a quick break. And before we do, let's focus in on the upcoming IAAF World Championships, which will be taking place in Doha. As things stand, we've only got three South African athletes that have achieved the A qualifying standard in Rikinet Stienkamp, Karina Horn and uh, Teboho Mamatu, Zanae Vanavolt, as well as Dominique Scott 
effort have got the B qualifying standard. So we'll have to wait and see whether uh, ASA do select them as part of the team. Casa Semenya, she is currently ruled out due to the ongoing legal challenges of regulations that prevent her from defending her 800 meter world title without taking hormone blockers. We'll be back with more Ladies Club after this. Welcome back. You're watching The Ladies Club. Please join us on social media. It's so easy. Just use our hashtag, hashtag The Ladies Club with any of your comments. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, as well as on Facebook. Well, you've met our two phenomenal game changers that we have on the show, Smangile Smash Hadebe and Colleen McCausland. They're in studio and they're our game changers for today. Smangile hails from Limpopo. She grew up in Kwateme in Springs and is a force to be reckoned with inside the box. Boxing ring. Everyone knows that when she enters the ring, she fights to win. Boxing South Africa handed her the Female Prospect of the Year award in 2017 and again in 2018, cementing her status as the Queen of the Ring. And we've got to do this, you know, because we're focusing in on boxing. In the next corner, <laughs> we have Colleen, who is responsible for the careers of many boxers in Mzanzi, guiding them to greater heights. She was recognized for her efforts after she was named as Manager of the Year at this year's prestigious SA Boxing Awards. She manages Smangele, Walter Black Mamba Lamini, Lebo Mashitwa, Sia Mabena, Clement Slow Poison Kamanga, and Ndobayini Colossa, who are all trained by Lionel Hunter. So we said good morning to the both of you. I know how you feel about being involved in this male-dominated sport, but I want to know, how did it all begin? Where did the seed get sown? Because you were involved in sports and you yes. wanted to find something you were incredibly passionate about, and nothing quite tickled your fancy, like boxing. Well, I was in athletics. In school, I did athletics and all of that. But after school, yeah, yeah so I wanted... I watched the movie, A Million Dollar Baby, and that's when I started boxing. After watching that movie, it really motivated me. So I said, okay, why not try boxing? And I could see from newspapers in our local newspapers, they were, they were their posts where there's boxing and all of that. But I wasn't really interested until I watched A Million Dollar Baby movie. So and that's when I just went in and just, I just kept going. I never stopped. Okay, so Smash, I understand that your family describe yes. you as an incredibly <laughs> quiet and peaceful, peaceful person. person so how did they take <laughs> it when you all of a sudden said, you know what, this Hillary Swank in this movie, me, I want to be yeah. the black vision of that. <laughs> well, when they matched me with boxing, yeah. it didn't really match. Yeah. Until they saw me in the ring, actually. Because even my mother doubted that I would be this, I would get this far in boxing. I started as amateur. Well, it was difficult to find opponents. I never had a fight in amateur, okay. so I just turned pro, straight to pro. And, well, I was nervous, but here I am. I'm making it, and I'm still doing it. And you're still doing it, I'm and you've doing. changed your family's I've perceptions. Changed you, I've changed them. They're, now they want to be in every tournament, every tournament. When it's far, they're like, Ish, okay, is it going to be live? What? Give us feedback and all of that. So they're always on my case. So I'm very proud and very happy. Oh, so you yeah. showed them another side of smash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Colleen, how did you get involved in boxing and managing boxers? I've been, um, you know, I was a sportsman myself in professional sport as well, a full combat sport. I did judo most of my life. Okay. And then my daughter was also an Olympic qualifier and South African champions. So I've always been in sport and my husband also boxed, you know, just uh, for training. My son did MMA fighting. So I've always, there's always been a fighter in me. Um, so, you know, I'm too old to box now. So <laughs> the next best is to manage. And, you know, okay. this, the, the, the thing with there aren't many managers that focus mm. on, on the girls mainly. You know, it's, it's much more than managing for me. They, they're like, they become your children. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the um, characteristics of 
you being a manager that won you the BSA award was the fact that you look at the holistic uh, development of your boxers and you've revived some boxers' careers, basically. I mean, how important is that? And specifically when looking at women, I mean, any individual needs to be looked at mm. as a whole person, but specifically for women getting involved in the sport of boxing. Yeah. You know, the women, like I've mentioned before, don't get uh, the platform. So I will be the voice for the women that want to box and that have got the talent to box. Um, I'm quite vocal about uh, the equal rights for women in, in the sport. Yeah. And, you know, I have many people that don't like me for speaking out about it, but that's okay because um, I think that they need to be given a fair, a fair chance and I will speak out as long as I can for our boxers, for our yeah. females in our country. Oh, how did you guys meet one another well, I've decided to move from my stable where I was with Timber Zulu, yeah. who passed away last year. May his soul rest in peace, and I moved to Unleashed. Okay. This is my, actually my second, second professional club. Okay. Yes. And what was your initial thought when you, when you met Colleen and the team? Well, they're very supportive. They give you everything. I've never seen what they do to boxers. Some boxers do want what they do to us you know they just make sure that you've got the right fight the right diet right training they go all their way to find the right training because we rotate and go in based on training so i'm very happy i'm very happy to have met them I mean, I mentioned that holistic approach and uh, what's very important that you and Lionel do together, I understand, is providing food, special strength training and also sports psychology for your boxers. What was your initial uh, thought or impression of Smash when you met her? Um, you know, I didn't really know Smash from until I saw her training yeah. and you know she's she, instantly I just liked her because I love her commitment and her dedication she knows what she wants and that makes my job so much easier when you don't have to try and convince your boxer that they can actually she yeah. knows where she's going and and she's determined so she's very easy to manage you know and my job is to make sure that she's she's looked after out of the ring you know, her coach's job, Helena's job is to make sure she's fit for the ring. Mine is to make sure she, she's fit for out of the ring and for life, as well as their fitness. So, Mangele, how did you deal with that uh, to begin with? You mentioned the nerves before your very first professional fight, having not fought as an amateur. Yes. And every time you get into the ring, you understand what the risks are. Yeah, I do understand it. And I was fighting, it was Melissa Miller. She had, I think, seven or six fights. So imagine getting in the ring with no amateur record and getting in the ring with someone who's more experienced and he's, she's been in this game for longer than you. So it was a bit nervous. On the first round, I really did feel like taking off my gloves, going to my corner and taking off my gloves. It just, oh, you really? Know, really, it, it triggered my, my mind. But when I, when I sat there, I just said, you know, I'm... I can't give up that easily. I don't really, I'm not the kind of a person who gives yeah. up that easily. I'd rather, you'd rather knock me out. If <laughs> that's it. If, if I can get up, I will get up. Sure. I will get up and fight. And that first um, fight was back in uh, 2016. Uh, it, it, yes, it was in, in 2016. I turned, I don't, I don't remember the dates, but it was a Saturday, we turned, prof I turned professional. And I think in two weeks time, then I got a fight after that. So it was a bit short notice, but I made it anyway. It was six round. I fought six round there, and I made it all the way to the six round. It was a draw. And she would go on to fight Melissa Miller again yeah. and beat her. That's not the only p opponent that she's fought more than once. There's another opponent that's been quite prolific in uh, her career so far. But we'll talk about that in just a short while. Do stay with the Ladies Club. We're back after this.
Welcome back. You're watching The Ladies Club. Please get involved on social media using our hashtag, hashtag The Ladies Club. We are focusing in on boxing, so our trailblazer today is none other than Gladys Tsenene, affectionately known as Mama Noforti. Gladys was the first black female to get a boxing promoter's license, paving the way for Mzanzi's women in boxing. She broke into this male-dominated industry back in 2005 and went on to open the Rainbow Boxing Promotions, which represented almost 30 professional boxers. Who would you say really inspired you and has continued to inspire you? Well, one of the South African boxer who always motivated me was Kabisile Shabalala. Okay. Yes. Uh, we had a picture of, of her and, at the gym, so I always, you know, I wanted to push myself up to that level. Every time I was training, I was always looking up to her. I only watched one fight that she fought, and coming against her yeah. was the toughest decision I would ever make. Really? It was the toughest, because I won the 2017 Prospect of the Year, yeah. and two weeks later, I think, that very same month, I had to fight her. I had to fight her, so it was the... I was a bit nervous because my coach wasn't even afraid who I was going up against. He just had that, that, that hope for us and that winning, winning, winning spirit. So when I got in that ring, yo, it was the toughest, but I made it. I won on points. Fighting against, against your hero? Against my hero, against my hero. Wow. So, Colleen, who would you say has been your big role model doing what you do? I think my, my role model was probably my daughter and my husband. Okay. My husband was a South African bodybuilder. So, okay. you know, that commitment, that dedication to sport and the discipline, is de he, I, would say, I would have to say my husband and my daughter. Who would you say is your biggest rivalry? Hmm. Uh, Ellen is the toughest. Okay. Between the Melissa, Melissa and Gabisila, Ellen is the toughest. She just wants to go. Really? She just wants to kill, according to me. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants to kill. But she's a very good fighter. A very, she's got the heart for boxing. And it's really good to come across different fighters. Because I've never, out of the females that I fought, yeah. I've never met someone like Ellen. Maybe I will, maybe. Yeah. And few years time when I meet other opponents from outside. But she is a very good fighter. Our fight, I think it was the best. Even from the first one, first fight, second fight, and the third one, it was just a bomb. I think the, the crowd enjoyed it. Yeah, mm. so you've had a win against her, you've had a draw, draw and then and a loss, a loss for an so international like, title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, it's like, I'm, I'm very proud of myself on how I did in all of them, in all of them, regardless the loss, the win, the draw, and I'm very proud that I did it. all of them. I experienced all of them in one person, so it shows how we both want this yeah. and how we put our work into it. Uh, we mentioned uh, fighters that uh, Smash has met more than once and uh, other than the fact that it creates a little bit of a rivalry, it creates excitement, also it's an indication of where the sport is at, yes. that there are not that many competitors mm -hmm. available. Part of the reason why Smash hasn't really been able to use uh, her two-time prospect of the year title to maximize it and to get a lot of fights yes absolutely you know um smash fought ellen even though they weren't in the same weight division ellen is a higher weight division than smash um, she is a flyweight but you know being a female in boxing you will take any fight um, just to fight so you know we really need more exposure when it comes to boxing because our girls have got such talent um, smash is definitely a world champion she will be a world champion given the platform yeah. to, to compete as often as she should. So. But that's the big challenge, isn't it? It's about getting the female boxers actually in the ring and getting them opponents. That's absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, um, we've, we've asked BSA that at, at every tournament in South Africa that it is compulsory that a female bout should be at, on every fight ball. That's the only way we're going to grow the boxing of sport. 
in, uh, for women in our country. Smash, what does it mean to you that uh, you were twice awarded the BSA Prospect of the Year and one year you were actually given your award by Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh -huh. Yes, uh, I'm very happy and it shows that we can do something as females in our country. If they can give us the chance to represent our, con our, our country, outside and inside. There was tragedy that yeah. hit not yeah. only women's boxing but the yeah. entire boxing fraternity when Baby Lee was murdered oh. by her estranged partner yes. by three bullets into, yeah. her, into her head. Uh, you work not only with counselling victims of crime but you also work with a non-profit organisation that uh, looks to protect women who have been victims of gender-based violence. Mm. I mean, how did you feel when you heard that news and, I mean, you knew Leandre Echels? Mm. You know, for me, it, it's, it's heartbreaking to see that a, a, a boxer that has the attention, you know, of of South Africa was murdered and even though she had a restraining order against the, her boyfriend it still didn't stop him you know the, the system failed her is my opinion because how with a restraining order did he still get to kill her um, I find that the system definitely fails our women in this country um, as it does our boxers, our female boxers in this country. And like you mentioned, I get called out to a lot of, you know, where a child has been raped. I'm, I'm the first one on the scene to, to comfort that child. Where uh, a woman has been beaten up by her husband or, you know, or, or she's been raped or even murdered. So I think it's, it's about time that women stand united against this gender-based violence that is happening. And, and that the government actually pay attention and, and change the, the laws because it's, it's needed. How has boxing helped? to you to deal with some of those things that you see other young women going through? What happened to her, it's very, dis I'm very disappointed and mm. I just hope that one day maybe I'll get to fight her because we are on the same weight. That would have been a good fight, that would have been a good fight for us. The audience would have loved it. So unfortunately it's not going to happen, that's not going to happen. So uh, to lose a champion like that and she was going far. She, I wish, I wish, wish. Where do you see yourself, Colleen, in the next 10 years? If you could just have one goal that you would like to achieve in that time frame, what would it be? And you can also think about that, Smash. My goal is to see the boxers achieve everything they can possibly achieve. I've basically had my life, I'm 50 now, but uh, whatever I can, I want to put into the boxers. So in 10 years from now, they can carry on the legacy. You know, it's all about what are you going to leave behind for them to carry mm. on where you've left off. So well, I want to see myself as a world champion and speaking up for those women who can't speak for themselves. I just want to see us as women standing, standing for each other and also men, invite men in it. And whatever happened the last month and it's still happening, I just want to see less of that. I just want to see less of that because it's not really good to live in fear. I'll get up and run in the morning not knowing what's going to happen. So it's really risky. It's really risky and I just want to see, I just want to be free, free in my country. Quite a telling thing, uh, South Africa, when you hear a boxer who knows the risks of being inside the ring saying that she feels it's risky when she goes out for a training run in the morning. Thank you guys so much for speaking honestly Thank with us here on the Ladies Club. Just, Half an hour is just you. not enough time. <laughs> uh, all the best of luck with your future and with Thank your you plans so and keep much. on doing the good work so that you're doing. Thank you. All right, this is how we say goodbye from myself, Aileen Coatley, and the rest of the Ladies Club team. Remember, we're always on social media. Just use our hashtag, and thank you for spending some time with us. So you can send us your ideas of game changers and trailblazers and stories that you'd like us to cover here on the show. Until we meet again, remember that greatness is never, ever given. It's always earned. Goodbye.